The Darkness and the Light is the 109th episode of the television series Star Trek – Deep Space Nine, the 11th episode of the fifth season. It premiered on January 6, 1997. This show explores Kira's ties to the resistance movement during the Kardashians' occupation of Bior, an event that precedes the main timeline of the Deep Space Nine show yet is often explored in the course of the show's run. The occupation provides the story background for the show, and is why Deep Space Nine is a Cardassian's design, they left it there when they left Bior. Topic. Plot Kira is shocked and saddened when Latha Mabron, a fellow member of the Shakar resistance cell turned Videk, is murdered. Kira's shock turns to fear, however, when she receives a recorded message moments after learning of the murder. Her message consists of a picture of Latha appearing on the computer screen, and a scrambled voice saying simply, That's one. Odo is unable to trace the message, which Kira interprets as a threat to all the former members of the Shakar resistance cell. Kira makes arrangements to transport resistance member Fala onto a runabout returning to the station. But something goes wrong during the transport, and Fala is killed. After what's left of the dead woman's body is removed, an investigation of the transporter reveals that Fala was killed by a tiny detonator programmed to scramble the transporter beam. A message from the scrambled voice saying, That's two, is soon delivered on a PADD. Later, while working on the case in Odo's office, Kira receives a That's Three message displaying the face of Mobara, another member of the Shakar. Immediately, they begin efforts to contact him, hoping to stop his murder. Kira returns to her room in O'Brien's quarters to rest, but is jolted by a loud crash outside her door. Phaser drawn, Kira creeps into the living room, ready to face the assassin. Instead, she comes face to face with Pharrell and Lupaza, two more members of the Shakar who have come to help her. Thinking her bodyguard was the killer, they attacked him. Causing the noise Kira heard. Pharrell and Lupaza volunteer to hunt down the assassin for Kira. She prefers to handle her problem within the boundaries of the law, but allows Pharrell and Lupaza to stay with her in the O'Brien quarters to protect her and the O'Brien's unborn child. Later, the grim, but not unexpected, news of Mobra's death arrives. During a staff meeting, Odo surmises that whoever is doing the killing most likely has a vendetta against Kira, and that she is also a likely target. Nog, Dax and Kira work with the scrambled voice, hoping it will provide a clue, but the voice used in the messages turns out to be Kira's own. Their work is interrupted by news that there has been an explosion in the O'Brien quarters. O'Brien was not home at the time, but Pharrell and Lupaza are dead. Odo tells Kira that he has compiled a list of possible suspects with the skills, opportunity and motive for these attacks. He refuses to give Kira the list, afraid the very pregnant woman will head off in search of the killer on her own. Kira pretends to have no intention to leave the station, but the moment Odo leaves, she transports into his office, steals the file and shuts down Odo's computer so she can't be followed. Then she takes off in a runabout. After eliminating several suspects, she arrives at the home of Sillerin Prin. 
almost instantly, she is placed in a restraining field and told she will die. Silurin, who was severely disfigured in a resistance bombing, is punishing those involved especially Kira, who was the ringleader. The bombing in which he was injured killed civilians, women, and children. Silurin himself was not a member of the Cardassians' military but was a simple laundry worker, cleaning soldiers' uniforms. He points out that he has not killed indiscriminately like Kira. She counters that the Kardashians were a hostile alien race occupying Bior, and even if he only provided the military minor logistical support, he was indirectly aiding the occupation, and thus his views are hypocritical. Silurin tells Kira that he will spare her baby, but kill her, and prepares to operate. Kira warns him that this will kill the baby, which is not Bajoran, but human, meaning it has special needs. Silurin is unmoved. Thinking quickly, Kira begs for a sedative, realizing that the herbs she has taken for her pregnancy have rendered most sedatives ineffective. She pretends to fall asleep, then lunges at Silurin, attacking and killing him. Sisko, Bashir and Odo arrive to rescue her, but Silurin is already dead, and Kira, shaken and sobered by her experience, only wants to go home. Topic. Production The episode was the first Star Trek story written by Brian Fuller, whose original pitch for the episode was a riff on the Agatha Christie novel and then there were none. Fuller would go on to write another fifth season episode, Impoc Nor, before going on to join the writing staff for sister show Star Trek, Voyager, eventually rising to co-producer by its final season. In 2016 Fuller was briefly showrunner for the upcoming Star Trek, Discovery. He established the story arc and mythology but left prior to the series airing due to other commitments. 